Hey, what's up? It is Dan or DMAD96 here, and welcome back to our F1 Manager career mode with Stuart GP. Last time at Avocadian Grand Prix, we scored fifth place with Johnny Herbert. Rubens Barrichello would have scored points if it wasn't for an engine failure towards the end of the race. And in today's episode, we are returning to Europe once again at Magnicor for the French Grand Prix. This should definitely be an interesting one after previous experience from the game at the French Grand Prix track tends to put in some exciting results. Maybe we could see a different race win of the season. Obviously, Mick Hacken has won every race apart from the first one in Australia, won by David Coulthard. So maybe we can see a different race winner in a Matney Corn. Hopefully, we can get a better result than a fifth place. As you can see, in the championship, we're sitting third and fifth for drivers. Johnny Herbert doing very well. Still ahead of David Coulthard, who struggled uh, with finishing this season. And then the constructors, we are 26 points. Um, a big 12 points ahead of Jordan. I don't know if that's going to last actually, it's going to be very close, uh, especially McLaren and Ferrari. And if we finish third though, we'll have a harder objective next year I do believe. I think they'll want to finish second, which might be quite hard with Ferrari and McLaren both having good cars and them both having uh, the two best drivers in the game. They're just changing teams, Hacken going to Ferrari and Schumacher going to McLaren. So it's going to be interesting next year and it all depends on our finishing position, uh, how hard our, our objective will be. As you can see in the uh, Team Managed Championship as well, we're currently sitting uh, first in that, ahead of Alan Prost in second. Frank Williams is still at the bottom, despite the fact he has managed to finally get off the mark and score some points. But now that was pretty much all that I had to recap on from the previous episode, and now it's time to move on to the news reports. First in the news this week is BAR, who have made the decision to keep their AP racing brakes, but have parted ways with commercial manager Les Olsen as the American is on its way to the Sauber team for 2000. The Swiss team have also made a switch in cheap designers with Prost designer Loic Bigoy, replacing current designer Andrew Tilly, who is on his way to Williams. Elsewhere, Minardi have also made some big announcements, most notably the signing of Patron's engines in replace of their current Ford Z-Tex. Hervé Baudinier was also announced as the team's commercial manager to keep their personnel for next season. Lastly, with Michael Schumacher joining McLaren, many were wondering if his brother Ralph would do the same. However, it was just announced that the Schumacher name will stay with Ferrari as Ralph will partner Mika Hakkinen as the team's driver number two, leaving an opening at Williams for next year. That's all for the news, and now it's time to go to the Stewart team for a special announcement from their team principal. So I nearly forgot about this. As you remember in the last episode, I announced uh, our personnel for next year, which is Rory Byrne as our chief designer, Gary Anderson as the technical director, and David Warren as a commercial manager. And I promised in today's episode that we will be announcing our suppliers for next year. So that is uh, the engine, the electronics, and the brakes. And I think you can probably tell what I've gone before, actually. Uh, we've got four Cosworth engines this year, and they've been decent for us. Uh, we've been quite good with them and we haven't been doing too badly. These are the Jordans who are supposed to have a better engine. But um, unfortunately next year, as much as the Ford logo looks very good on the side of our car, we're going to have to get rid of it because we are bringing in the big ones, Mercedes-Benz engines next year. And well, one of the main reasons why I've got this in is because it looks like we're going to be the only team to use them because McLaren are going to be using Ford Z-Tex next year. And uh, they are the best engine in the game. And with Ferrari and McLaren still having their chassis uh, from uh, Roy Byrne and Neil Oatley respectively, uh, we need these engines if we want any chance of um, keeping up to them. So yeah, it's a good move uh, to actually get Mercedes-Benz engines for us next year, and they're much better than the Fords, but they do cost a lot. And that's also one of the main reasons why I had to cost cut a little bit on the personnel. Now on to the electronics, we have the Vistian electronics this year. Arguably the worst electronics in the game because we're only be given three per season and we need to get better electronics because we are actually close to running out and I really don't want to run out. Um, despite the fact they are good expertise, it's resources that matter. And they are quite cheap as well, but the ones that I've gone for are only slightly more expensive. And I've gone for Magneti Morelli Electronics for next year. Only a slight increase of uh, price, I think it's uh, 12 million between both? Yes, 12 million. So. Not bad at all. We get um, the maximum resource as well. So we're going up in the world with the electronics and the engines. It should be good next year. Finally, the brakes. Again, they don't really matter at all because all three brakes have an expertise of... Finally, the brakes. And again, it doesn't really matter at all because all three of them have an expertise rating of 100. It's the resources that really matters. And yeah, Brembo brakes have... Um, 
the worst results. I think you only get three per season. AP and MR, yeah, 100 per season. And yeah, that's basically why um, we have kept AP racing brakes because we've got them already, and there's no real need to get rid of them because we've got the joint best brakes in the game. So it's worth keeping the brakes for next season. So that's why I've chosen them. Yeah, so that is the um, suppliers for this year and next year. Next episode, we will be announcing our drivers. That's the big announcements we'll, uh, that we'll be doing for next year. So, uh, make sure to stay tuned for that. And now let's move on to the practice session for the French Grand Prix. And, well, the winner of the most interesting practice session of the season has to go to France. Eddie Irvine, who has been nowhere this season, fastest in practice from the two Williams drivers and Jarno Trulli. Jarno Trulli, fourth fastest in practice, David Coulthard in fifth, with Giancarlo Fisichella sixth, Luca Badoa in seventh. That is no way near expected from Minardi. Um, yeah, it's just mental, really, to see Minardi up there. Uh, Damon Hill in 8th and Schumacher down in 9th, Hakkinen down in 13th. So a very crazy practice session. And if we see things like this happen in qualifying, I think we could be in for a very entertaining race. So, with that in mind, let's go straight into the qualifying report. Sauber, the slowest team in qualifying this time, as a Macy engineer struggled to pace all weekend, lining up in 22nd and 18th respectively. Pedro de la Rosa was a big surprise, putting his arrows up in 16th, but no way near a surprise as Minardi, with both cars lining up next to each other in 14th and 15th. Alexander Verst also struggled to 20th on the grid, as teammate Fizzy Keller managed to do better up in 12th. Ricardo's not managed to outqualify his teammate Villeneuve starting 13th, but it was the main championship contenders to struggle, as McLaren were way off the pace, with Coulthard 9th, and the championship leader Mika Hakkinen all the way down in 11th. In between them was the other contender of Michael Schumacher. Jano Trulli benefited from this nicely, managing 8th place in the props. Top 6 starts for both stewards with Barrichello and qualifying Johnny Herbert, but just ahead was the two Williams cars, putting in surprise performances to collect 3rd and 4th. Eddie Jordan collects a front row start with his current driver Heinz Alfredson lying 2nd, however it was his former driver Eddie Irvine who collects his first career pole position in surprising circumstances and puts himself in good contention to become the first non-McLaren winner this season. I think we're going to be in for a very exciting French Grand Prix. There's the strategy on the screens right now. Two stop strategies, Johnny Herbert hitting first. But what is really interesting is that qualifying result. As you saw in the qualifying reports, McLaren are just nowhere to be seen in 9th and 11th. I think for the first time as well, David Coulthard out qualifies Mika Hakkinen. Michael Schumacher is down in 10th. And where is his teammate? He's only gone and taken pole position. Eddie Irvine on pole position for the French Grand Prix. Heinz Alfredsen in a surprise second. And then we have Zanardi out qualifying Ralf Schumacher to third. And we're down in fifth and sixth. It's going to be a very exciting race because we'll have um, Coulthard, Schumacher and Hakkinen. They won't stay down there forever. They are going to charge for the field. We've also got to worry about Damon Hill as well. He's also quite quick in the Jordan. Uh, David Coulthard, Mick Hakkinen, the only drivers for one race. Is Eddie Irvine, could he be the third? Heinz Alfredsen, good contention. What about Williams? Heck, we're even in for a decent shout as well. It's all interesting way down the order as well. Minardi have just achieved their best qualifying of the season, 14th and 15th. Sauber, in fact, getting the worst out of it. John Lace is starting down fast. It's going to be all interesting. But now, it's, um, I think we should actually go on to the race. It's going to be an exciting one. We're going to push both drivers from the start. We want to get the best out of this here. Have this very interesting grid. We've got Rubens Marichello sitting in fifth position. Johnny Herbert in sixth. And a great start from Johnny Herbert, it seems. I think he has gone ahead of his teammate. No, he hasn't. Barrichello stays in fifth position. Eddie Irvine leads the field, going out of turn one here at Magny Corps. We're on board with Johnny Herbert in sixth position. A brilliant start from Jarno Trulli in the cross. He's overtaken Damon Hill and is up to seventh position. Fantastic start there for the cross driver, starting down in eighth. Brilliant qualifying from him as well. But McLaren and Ferrari, we're going to take a look at where Schumacher and everyone else is. Eddie Irvine leads. We go down towards the Adelaide hairpin. Heinz Alfredsen only half a second behind and the two Williams drivers as well keeping very close to that Jordan and you can see the gap that Eddie Irvine is slowly starting to put away from Heinz Alfredsen and the rest of the field. Could it be an easy win for the Ferrari driver as we go up towards now the top of the racetrack? 
Uh, Johnny Herbert defending from Jano Trulli, having a little look around the outside as the cross driver. Eddie Irvine now almost, well, over a second ahead of Heinz Alfred. And on board with Mika Hakkinen, who is catching up to the back of um, one of the uh, Benetton drivers. David Coulthard has been overtaken from by Michael Schumacher at the start. So you have Barry Kello, uh, I mean Hakkinen even, trying to get past. I think that is Giancarlo Fisichella. Johnny Herbert, though, is still in sixth position as the field are just about to complete their first lap here of the French Grand Prix. Eddie Irvine is going to lead as we cross the start-finish line after this final corner. After the first lap here at Madney Core, what a hectic start it has been. Right, we're just going to quickly move on to lap three, and you can have a look at the lead there that Eddie Irvine is slowly pulling away, and Heinz Alfredson and, and Ralph Schumacher even getting away from everyone else. Uh, unfortunately, Barrichello has been overtaken by Damon Hill, so has Johnny Herbert, and even worse for Johnny, Michael Schumacher is on an absolute charge in eighth position. Oh, you can just see him now. He is slowly catching up to Johnny Herbert. You have David Coulthard slowly dropping back. Actually, no. Jarno Trulli, as I just say, is having a great battle with Schumacher for, uh, for a position. And I, I can't believe I'm saying it. Jarno Trulli is actually doing a pretty decent job as we just start lap four. But Barrichello is slowly uh, catching back up to Damon Hill. He's got uh, Zanardi reeled in as well. It's going to be very close. But Schumacher and the two McLaren drivers aren't going to stay behind for long, I don't think. OK, so now we're back on lap 10. And what is interesting here, Johnny Herbert seems to be pulling away from Michael Schumacher. He is over a second ahead of him now, and both cars are in the points. Zanardi has dropped back. Uh, it looks like, unfortunately, that uh, we are dropping back to Damon Hill. But if we can pull a decent gap to the cars behind, we're going to go into whole position here. L looking good for decent points. Eddie Irvine absolutely charging out in front. Heinz Alfredson is, do, uh, is doing a decent job as well ahead of um, Ralph Schumacher. And McLaren still behind both our drivers here as uh, we're, we're just about to start um, lap 11 for our drivers anyway. Oh no, Johnny Herbert's out. Johnny Herbert is out of the race. Suspension failure. Uh, I think I may have actually forgot to replace the parts on his car, so that is a mistake on my behalf. Um, yes, it is. I did. That was a big mistake on my behalf. <laughs> God, I feel so stupid. But Barrichello now is the only driver in this race. We're going to have to keep him on hold position at some point, I think. He's five seconds ahead of Jarno Trulli. I don't want him retiring as well. So we're going to put him down hold position and see how much seconds he loses to the Prost. Oh, he's lost one second. Uh, no, that, yeah. Back into push you go. Damon Hill's on a charge here. He's in second. As we've just been overtaken by Coulthard and Schumacher. We are due into the pits this lap, I think. Lap 25. It's another next lap, actually. Lap 25. So, yeah, we've got one more lap to go. So, we've just been to the pits. We're in 10th position. I'm not sure if cars had have pitted. But, um, unfortunately for us, it's that McLarens and uh, Schumacher have got ahead of us. Schumacher, I think. Actually, Schumacher's pitted. Yeah, I think we've just overtaken Schumacher now. Not bad. Can we stay ahead of him? Can we actually beat Ferrari on raw pace here in France? Probably not. Oh no, it's a massive shame behind Sal Frenson. He's just retired from the race and he was looking good for a strong result. He could have probably won it, I think. But Heinz Sal Frenson has retired from the race. We've moved into 7th position. Uh, Mika Hacken is actually our next target. What? Uh, he's got tyre wear. Please don't tell me he's going to retire. He's not retiring just yet, that's good. But he did say blisters on the tyres, which um, yeah, does worry me a little bit. So he's losing pace, it seems. Schumacher is catching hard, but uh, that is to be expected. He's in a Ferrari and we're in a Stewart. He's got a better engine than us. We've only got Fords. Yeah, we we win the points, but again, pit stops are going to happen. I'd love it now if there's a retirement for one of the big runners here. But we may score some points. But we're ahead of Schumacher on pace, I think. Just been in the pits. We're in ninth place now. I think points might be out of the question. I'm not so sure. I really hope it isn't, though. We could have a good chance of scoring points. We were keeping up with Schumacher at one stage. It doesn't look likely now. Uh, somebody's just hard. Oh no, Damon Hill's out! Damon Hill is out. Both Jordans have retired and they were looking good for both good results. Eddie Irvine in the lead of this race. Only a few laps to go. Could it be Eddie Irvine taking the victory here? Still got a few laps left. Jarno Trulli having a hell of a race in fifth position. Jarno Trulli has just overtaken Mika Hakkinen. Jarno Trulli is on an absolute charge at the minute. He has passed the reigning champion. He's having one hell of a performance. 
So whilst points are pretty much out of the question now for Stuart GP, I've actually got to hand it for Eddie Irvine. Starting on pole position, he has truly dominated this race. This is only his second finish of the season. He finished in Monaco. He's retired in every round apart from here in France. Eddie Irvine is going to win here in Madney Cure for Ferrari. And the first different winner, a non-McLaren driver winning a race. Ralph Schumacher comes around the final corner. It's second place for the Williams driver. His best result of the season, the team's best result of the season. And oh, Jarno Trulli's just taken third at the last moment. David Coulthard retired again, another driver error. And Jarno Trulli on the podium for Prost, an absolute shock. Brilliant result for the Prost team. Michael Schumacher fourth, Hacking in fifth, and Alex Zanardi in sixth position. Jarno Trulli. Absolute hell of a drive. Third place. He was quick all weekend. Unfortunately, we were one place out of the points because um, Coulthard retired towards the end. Shame for Johnny Herbert. He could have had, actually had decent chance of scoring points if I actually remember to fit all the parts on his car. Yeah, brilliant work for me there. But Eddie Irvine, a well-deserved victory for Ferrari. Ralph Schumacher coming home in second. Jarno Trulli taking third. Schumacher... Outscoring Mika Hakkinen for, believe it or not, the only second time this season. Hakkinen finishing fifth. Uh, his uh, winning streak has ended. McLaren's winning streak has ended. Uh, Alexander is now picking up the final points. Williams, as we all know, Frank Williams is last in team manager's uh, standings. I think he's going to be gaining from that after that brilliant result. So now let's move on to the uh, drivers and constructors standings. So in terms of the drivers' championship standings, nothing much changing. Schumacher has only gained a slight amount on hacking in. Johnny Herbert stays in third in the championship despite his retirement and Eddie Irvine with that win. Raf Schumacher as well also moving up the order ahead of Rubens Barrichello in the championship thanks to him not scoring this weekend. Uh, David Coulthard staying in sixth position. Barrichello dropping down to an unfortunate seventh and Jarno Trulli has passed Damon Hill thanks to his excellent third place finish. Into the Constructors Championship and again nothing much changing. Ferrari gaining slightly Thanks to their victory in France. Only uh, 18 points behind McLaren. We stay in third with Jordan in fourth. Uh, Williams in fifth. Benetton sixth. Uh, Prost gaining some big points. Williams overtaking Benetton. Forgot to mention that. Their first podium finish of the season. Only Aris and Minardi, the own teams yet to score. And in the team manager standings, we stay on top despite not scoring. Alan Prost, well-deserved podium finish. Second place there. John Top moving ahead of Ron Dennis thanks to his win with Eddie Irvine. Ron Dennis obviously fourth. Eddie Jordan dropping down to fifth. Disappointing result for him. Rocco Benetton in sixth. Uh, Frank Williams moving from last position all the way ahead of Peter Sauber and Tom Walkinshaw. Still slowly getting there for the Williams team principal. Hopefully he'll probably be ahead of uh, Craig Pollock and uh, Giancarlo Minardi by the end of the season. But it looks like Williams are slowly starting to get their act together now. So yeah, that's been it for the uh, French Grand Prix and a fairly exciting one at that as well. Uh, despite not scoring points at all, uh, just um, actually glad to see a McLaren not win. So fantastic stuff there. And uh, the next race, of course, is the British Grand Prix at Silverstone. Very popular track, one of my favourite tracks as well. But importantly, it is our home Grand Prix. With Johnny Herbert as well, British driver. Uh, bet he'll be looking for a good result as well. And let's hope we can actually get some points this weekend uh, instead of um, just missing out on the points in the previous race. So let's hope to get to a, a good result here in Silverstone. And of course, like promised, I will be announcing my two drivers from the 2000 season at this weekend. Hopefully, I think you guys will be very happy with, with the choices I've made. But you'll find that out in the next episode. But anyway, I hope you have enjoyed today's episode, guys. If you have, please do like, comment down below, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Until next time, guys, it's been Dman96. I'll catch you guys later. You put a part inside the mind, and I know there's something between us with nothing inside. Nothing at all.